I'm going to show you how to make this squash and stretch animation in Fusion really simply. So let's get started. We're going to start completely blank. I have set up a little scene here. What we're going to need to start with is a rectangle. So if you hit shift spacebar, you'll bring up this box and you want to bring a rectangle shape in and then you want to bring in a rectangle a transform, a shape transform. And then lastly, you want to bring in a shape renderer because you can't render a shape without a shape renderer. And so you're going to connect all of these to a merge so that everything is connected together to the media out. And so what you wind up with is this big square in the middle of the canvas. So to fix that, what we're going to do is mess with the transform and the rectangle here. And so we're going to get rid of this transform because we're dealing with this transform here. Um, so first what you're going to do is you're going to take the size of the X and you're going to set an expression. So you're going to set an expression over here to the size of the X to be whatever you want the size of the, the rectangle to be first. So let's say we want the rectangle to be 0.1 and 0.1 and then you're going to want to bring, make the size of the x to be the sum of the y and x, so 0 0.2 in this case, minus the y. So you want to pick up the y over here, so it's 0 0.2 minus y. And what happens is the, the y and the x now move in sync with each other and you get the same area regardless, which is what you want when doing a squash and stretch because squash and stretch is all about keeping the volume the same across the whole piece. And so the next thing you wanna do is move the, make this a point one again. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make the pivot for the Y, the bottom of the, oops, we did a point one rotation. We want a point one size and a zero rotation. So you're gonna move the Y pivot down to the bottom of this rectangle. That way, when you're doing any of the adjustments, everything happens from the bottom there. And so let's make the X pivot down there too. The X pivot will change where it's at. So we want the Y pivot to be that and then it will change everything from there. Next what you want to do is you want to create a new control for the corners of the rectangle, the corner radius, because we want to create a circle here. So if the corner radius is one, then we want to come over here, right click the transform node and hit edit controls. And that brings up this edit control dialog box here where you want to set a new slider control in the controls section here and name it corner radius. And that way, when you're in the transform tools, you now have this corner radius um, slider that does nothing right now. But if you pin this and then you come back over to the rectangle and you create an expression for the rectangle to be the same as the corner radius, what happens is now everything we do with the corner radius here messes with the corner radius of the rectangle. So now we can animate everything just in this one transform node. And that's what we want to do. So to animate the squash and stretch, what we want to do is to set the a keyframe for the Y offset the X size and the Y size and the corner radius. Um, that way when we're bouncing, we can mess with the corner radius to make the squash and stretch look a little bit better. Um, so to do that, now we're gonna come to, so we started at 23, we're gonna go to zero now, from zero, and we're gonna set everything to be the same here as it is at frame zero. Oops. Okay. Now, in the middle of the two, 
at frame 12, what we're gonna to wanna to do is bring the Y position down, the Y offset down to the bottom of this base here. And that way we know where our bottom section is of the bounce. So now if we watch this back, it just bounces ever so slowly. And that's what we want. So now what we can do is as this hits the ba the very, very bottom here, we can make the Y size go like down. And so the X goes wide. And then we can set the corner radius to be a little bit less so that it looks a little bit better when it squashes. And we can just bring that Y down. And then if we go a couple frames over, we go one frame over, then we can reset the Y to be 0.1 so the size is right and reset the corner radius to be the the right corner radius. And so now what we get when it bounces is it comes down and it just like squashes. But see how it like squashes before it gets to the base? What we want it to do is we want to set another keyframe here right before it hits the bottom and we want to make sure the Y is 0.1 and the corner radius is 1. So now that bounce only lasts for one second or one little frame and just boom it looks a little bit better. But the problem is that it's too linear, so it's not moving very nicely. And so to fix that, what we wanna do is go to the, not the corner radius, but the Y offset. We only wanna look at the Y offset here in the spline editor. And then we want to select all of these, hit S to smooth them. And now what we'll get is it moves a little bit smoother when it gets down to the bottom. But really, when you're doing a um, squash and stretch, what you want to do is make sure that this one is eased out all the way and this one has no ease in and then it, this one is eased out all the way or the opposite. So this one's eased in all the way so it looks like a bounce. And so now what we'll get is boom, just a real quick bouncing up, bouncing up. And so that's how you do a very basic squash and stretch. If we want to add a little bit of extra to it, what we can do is as it comes back from this before it leaves the ground, if we want to bring this Y back down here and hold it for a second, boom. We can then go a couple more frames out, like right here, and we can take the Y size and extend it up in the corner radius down again. And then we can go another frame here and we can set the Y size back to normal and the corner radius back to one. And so what happens is we get this nice little like smear or smear and it like just gives a little bit extra to the bounce. And so we can even do it over here on the bait on the first. We can just go down, create this a little bit better like that. And now when it comes down it just It drops and then it comes down into this into the um, the squash so that's how you create a little squash and stretch animation in fusion it's not perfect but it's a basic way of creating a squash animation in fusion if you have any other questions or want to learn any other basic animation principles in fusion please let me know